Okey, semua boleh nampak skrin saya? Boleh dengar suara? Boleh, Doktor. Boleh, okay. Doktor. So, uh, okay, so during my class session, if you have question to ask, you can always interrupt me. Okay, you can always ask questions. No problem. Okay. So, uh, previously we have uh, stopped until uh, chapter 3 uh, in the topic of frequency modulation, FM. Okay, uh, we have learned up to the FM equations. Okay, we have learned up to the FM equations. I think up to slides number one zero three in your notes. Okay, so before we begin uh, 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 today's uh, lecture session, maybe we can uh, refresh uh, again what we have learned so far up to uh, week seven. Okay, previously. So, uh, previously we have learned about uh, frequency modulation. So, remember that frequency modulation is the process of changing the frequency property of the carrier in accordance with the amplitude variation of the input message signal. Okay. So, ini adalah melibatkan, uh, process modulation ini melibatkan perubahan frequency carrier berkadaran dengan perubahan amplitude daripada input signal ok so uh, in AM previously we have learned about AM AM is the process of changing the amplitude of the carrier in accordance with the amplitude of the uh, input message now uh, the, the, the situation is different ok so now the, the frequency property for FM for FM, uh, the frequency property of the carrier change in accordance with the amplitude variation of the input signal. However, uh, the amplitude of the carrier remains the same. Okay, dalam proses ini, uh, dalam proses FM, perubahan uh, berlakunya perubahan frekuensi carrier berkadaran dengan perubahan amplitude daripada input signal. Tetapi, uh, the amplitude of the carrier in FM remains the same okay it's not, nothing changed okay in fm uh, you are directly change the frequency of the carrier okay so uh, as we have learned previously that uh, the the equations the general equation for angle modulation remember angle modulation is for both eh? uh, fm and also for pm phase modulation so the general equation for uh, angle modulation uh, defined as v of t okay is a function of time uh, equal to uh, vc okay sine okay vc sine and i would recommend you to put a big bracket like this uh, 2 pi fct okay uh, plus uh, theta t okay so this is the general equations of uh, angle modulations and we have learned about the uh, the main parameters so what we call here is the he, this one is the uh, phase uh, phase deviations okay this is uh, uh, what they call as a uh, uh, frequency deviations okay so this is a phase deviation parameter theta t and the whole thing here is the sorry this is theta t is the instantaneous phase deviations and this is the the whole thing here is the instantaneous phase okay and the unit for the parameter is in term of radians okay and if we do the uh, if we do the de deviations process we will get uh, instantaneous frequency deviations okay so if we do uh, 
for example here uh, d dt of uh, theta t we will get uh, here is the theta prime t okay which is the parameter of uh, instantaneous frequency deviations the unit is in term of radian per second or in term of hertz okay and if we uh, do the derivation of all of this okay d dt of all of this okay d dt of all of this uh, 2 pi fct plus theta t we will get here uh, 2 pi fc plus theta prime t okay so this is what we call as the instantaneous frequency the unit is in term of radian per second or we call it we can also put it as in term of hertz okay and uh, so far we have learned about uh, also we also have learned uh, about the the parameter uh, what we call the parameter of uh, uh, what they call uh, sensitivity parameters okay we have uh, uh, kp we have a uh, kf and also kp parameter okay so we have learned about uh, uh, KP okay and also we have learned about KF parameter so KP is the instantaneous uh, sorry KP is the uh, phase deviation sensitivity parameter uh, the, par uh, the, uh, the the parameter is in term of radian per volt and here KF is the uh, frequency uh, deviation sensitivity parameter kf uh, the parameter is in term of radian per second per volt or in term of hertz per volt okay so uh, so uh, we have uh, seen also in the notes uh, that theta t is equal to kp uh, vmt Okay, and theta prime t is uh, equal to kf uh, vmt. Okay, kf vmt. Okay, and from here, actually, uh, based on this. Uh, since we do the derivations of theta t, we got theta prime t. So therefore, if we want to find theta t, okay, theta t is equal to integral of uh, theta prime t dt. Okay. So from here, we can uh, uh, we can elaborate the equations. Okay, kita boleh kembangkan equations ini. Okay. So I rewrite again the equations. So for V P M T, okay, is equal to V C sine in bracket two pi F C T plus K P uh, V M T. Okay. Or you can write again this one as VC sine 2 pi FCT plus KP VM sine uh, 2 pi FMT. So this is for the phase modulation parameter. Okay, PM here means that this is for the phase modulation uh, equations. Okay, this is for the phase modulation general equations where you can see that here is actually the parameter of uh, beta p okay the index modulations 
Okay, the index modulation for phase deviation is beta p. Uh, the unit for beta, uh, remember, beta p is the modulation index for phase modulation parameter. And here, the, the, the parameter is, the unit is in term of radian. Okay. And uh, based on the general equation also, we can f uh, define the frequency modulation parameter. Okay, we can define the frequency modulation parameter uh, VFM. Okay, VFMT. Okay, uh, semua boleh dengar suara saya? Boleh, Doktor. Okay, sorry tadi ada freeze kejap. So, okay. So, VFM. VFM, saya tak boleh. Something wrong. Okay, uh, saya sambung semula sekejap eh. uh, Sorry about the technical issue So, saya akan sambung di sini uh, for VFMT So, untuk VFMT The general equations for frequency modulation is equal to VC sin uh, in bracket 2 pi FCT uh, plus KF Okay, plus KF, uh, it's actually like this. Eh? Uh, uh, I will do like this, plus theta prime T. Uh, so, this is actually like this. Eh? So, uh, integral of uh, KF 
VMP DT okay so here this one becomes a VC sine in bracket uh, 2 pi FCT plus KF so we can put KF outside because this is a constant parameter and also the peak amplitude of a uh, VMT so this is integral of sine 2 pi FMT DT okay so you can do like this VC sine in bracket uh, 2 pi FCT uh, so integral of sine you will get negative cos okay so here will become a uh, kf vm uh, over 2 pi fm okay cos 2 pi fm t okay and if you see from here this is what we call as the uh, beta f okay beta f is the uh, modulation index for the frequency modulation okay is the fm modulation index beta f it is a unitless parameter no unit okay so uh, from here uh, we have seen both of it okay uh, vfmt and also vpmt okay and if you see from the general equations um, some literature books using cosine function okay some other literature books using sine function so in Wayne Thomas's book it use uh, Wayne Thomas's use sine function and if you read other literature books other than Wayne Thomas normally they use a cosine function so it's not a problem okay you can use cosine function and you can also use sine function both of it is okay no problem okay the good thing if you use a cosine function for both eh, uh, vmt and also uh, and also for the general equation here we will get uh, something like this eh. so kalau kita gunakan uh, uh, cosine function okay maybe i will write in term of a uh, different color okay so the this becomes a uh, vc uh, cos uh, 2 pi fct and assuming that we also use cosine function for the uh, input signal okay assuming that we also use a cosine function for the input signal so therefore kpvm cos 2 pi fmt okay and then close bracket Remember uh, the uh, uh, the careless mistake, the mistakes, eh? the the normal mistakes that students always do is like this. Eh? Uh, careless mistake that students always do every semester is uh, what they do is they do like this. Eh? VC sine uh, two pi FCT plus theta t okay so this is wrong okay this is wrong remember that all of these parameters belong to the sine function okay berhati-hati eh ini adalah kesilapan yang sering selalu dilakukan oleh pelajar so if you do like this i will uh, straightforward i will can, i will uh, give you uh, uh, zero marks for for that questions Okay, kalau kamu buat seperti ini, maknanya markahnya adalah kosong. Why? Because if you do like that, uh, the rest of the calculations will be wrong. Okay, the rest of the calculation will be wrong. Okay, so be careful about that. And uh, I continue again. If let's say this is a cosine function, so saya, saya nak tunjukkan macam mana kalau cosine function. So that means this one is cos. Okay. Uh, 2 pi FCT uh, plus remember if you uh, integral of cos you will get 
plus. So this is a good thing of using a cos function, eh? cosine function. So this is Kf Vm over 2 pi Fm. So this is omega m actually. Eh? So uh, cos 2 pi Fm t. Finish. Okay. And from here, okay, we can continue uh, to the slides. Okay, kita boleh lihat semula slides. Eh. So, apakah uh, uh, yang topik seterusnya? Okay, kita boleh lihat dari sini. Eh. Okay. So, semua boleh nampak saya punya screen. Okay, everybody can see my screen. Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes, doctor. Okay, so look from here, uh, the important parameters, you see that uh, in FM, okay, this is for the FM. So in FM, the frequency of the carrier change in accordance with the, in, with the amplitude of the input signal. Okay, so the frequency of the carrier initially from FC, it will deviate from FC until a certain frequency, okay, the maximum positive, which is uh, FC plus delta F, and then it will deviates, or you can say that oscillates, eh? the, frequ uh, the frequency is oscillating, eh? so, and also it will deviates until FC minus delta F, and then back to the rest frequency so this is actually what we call as the rest frequency eh? fc okay the center frequency is what we call as the rest frequency and the the frequency of the carrier deviates from fc to fc plus delta f until uh, and then move to fc minus delta f so this process okay this process happens very fast okay it happens very fast uh, so the the oscillation frequency, eh? okay, class. The oscillation frequency is depending on the uh, FM, the value of FM, okay. The the frequency of the input message, okay. So what I mean is that if let's say FM is equal to, for example, uh, five thousand. Hertz or five kilohertz. Okay, so if if the frequency of the message input message is five thousand, that means the carrier will oscillate. Okay, will oscillate five thousand times per second. Ini bermakna frekuensi carrier akan berayun sebanyak 5,000 kali sesaat Okay So this input message signal Determine the number of oscillation per second For the carry frequency Okay So you see that this process happens very quickly Okay, very fast Okay So it will oscillate around 5,000 times per second So depending on the value of uh, input message frequency and from here, you see that uh, the distance eh, from rest frequency until the upper frequency is delta F. And from rest frequency to the lower frequency is delta F. The, the distance. Okay. So the total distance of carrier frequency oscillation, okay, the total distance of carrier frequency oscillation is uh, equal to 2 delta F. This is what we call as the carrier swing. Okay, so the carrier swing define the maximum distance of the carrier frequency oscillations. Okay, dia menggambarkan keseluruhan ya, eh? uh, keseluruhan uh, distance uh, pergerakan carrier frequency tersebut. Okay. And this is the waveform. Okay, this is the waveform for the 
above here is the carrier okay above here is the carrier here is the input message input signal so you see that carrier signal has a higher frequency compared to the input signal uh, frequency because uh, the waveform the the wave uh, it, uh, the ripple of the wave is very close to one to another so this is a higher frequency compared to the uh, input message a lower frequency and c here is for the fm and here is for the pm phase modulation okay so if i uh, if you are given only c and d okay you cannot differentiate which one is a frequency modulation uh, waveform which one is a phase modulation waveform okay kalau diberikan hanya dua waveform ini kita tidak dapat untuk membezakan antara fm dan juga pm okay is is impossible to differentiate unless you are given the third waveform the input message okay sekiranya kamu diberikan uh, waveform yang ketiga iaitu input message then we can determine whether this is a fm or pm why huh, because if you only look at the waveform you cannot differentiate which one is fm which one is pm both looks like that uh, looks the same both of it okay kedua-duanya nampak hampir sama eh Okay, so what's the different? Okay, what's the different? So first of all, let's look at the uh, FM signal. Okay, let's look at the FM uh, waveform. Okay. Uh, okay, so here you see that uh, the above part is the carrier so the carrier signal oscillate much much faster compared to the input uh, signal okay you see that uh, the the carrier signal already complete many cycles uh, during the first half and also during the second half of the input message Okay, semasa uh, first half of the input message, kalau kita lihat, carrier frequency telah melengkapkan beberapa kitaran. Eh. Okay, telah melengkapkan beberapa kitaran untuk setiap separuh daripada tempoh uh, input message. Maknanya dia sangat laju eh, sebenarnya. So, you see that uh, from uh, picture, uh, this picture, picture B first. Eh. Uh, the, the input message starts from zero and then move to uh, peak positive and then move to uh, negative side and then here you see that here this is what we call as a zero crossing okay zero crossing means the signal uh, the input message signal moves from positive cycle to negative cycle or uh, the the input signal uh, the input signal moves from negative cycle to positive cycle so either uh, positive to negative or negative to positive but remember that the zero crossing is the x axis okay dia adalah axis uh, paksi x tersebut eh perubahan daripada positive ke negative ataupun daripada uh, negative to positive and here the above one here is a uh, maximum positive here is a maximum negative okay so uh, all of these point are will you will see the uh, the difference between fm and also the pm kita akan lihat perubahan yang ketara the critical point uh, we we will see the 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 main difference at the at this critical point eh? okay so let's look at the C uh, picture C. Okay. So initially, uh, the carrier frequency oscillate at rest frequency. What does it mean? Means that it oscillates at F C. And then from here, uh, you see that 
the the input signal moves from zero until maximum positive. So what happened is that uh, at maximum positive, okay, at maximum positive, uh, the frequency of the carrier will become the minimum. Okay, will become uh, minimum, maximum negative deviations. So at this point, uh, the frequency of the carrier becomes Fc minus delta F. So the carrier frequency, the carrier frequency will be at the minimum value at this point. Okay, and then when the input signal moves from maximum positive until uh, zero crossing until the x-axis okay what happened is that the frequency of the carrier change from fc minus delta f to the rest frequency so it becomes fc and then the input message move from zero crossing to the maximum negative Okay, ne maximum negative, negative peak amplitude over here. So what happened is that the frequency of the carrier changed from rest to maximum positive. Okay, to maximum frequency, which is Fc plus delta F. Okay, and then... The, the input message moved from maximum negative to the zero crossing, to the x-axis. What happened is that the frequency of the carrier changed from, uh, maximum, from maximum positive Fc plus delta F to the rest frequency, Fc. Okay, so at this point, okay, at this point, the frequency of the carrier becomes rest frequency so you see that for fm uh, the carrier frequency will be at rest frequency whenever there's a zero crossing from the input signal uh, input signal frequency okay apabila berlakunya zero crossing pada uh, input signal maka frequency carrier berada pada rest frequency and if you see from here, during the positive maximum, uh, the, the frequency of the carrier becomes Fc minus delta F. And during the maximum negative uh, peak of the input message, the carrier frequency will become Fc plus delta F. Okay, so this is if we use a sine function. Okay, remember if you use a general equation for sine function, it becomes like this. Okay, kalau kita gunakan cosine function, dia akan terbalik daripada yang ini. Okay, so, and then, if we look from a picture D, picture D is for the phase modulation waveform, PM. So, beginning is a rest frequency. Beginning at rest, uh, FC. And for the phase modulation, the critical point is at the zero crossing. Okay, for PM, the critical point is at the zero crossing. So at the beginning, the signal moves from zero to uh, maximum positive. So here becomes maximum. Okay, the frequency becomes maximum at this point. Because the signal moves, eh? because the signal moves from, uh, the signal moves as if, okay, the signal moves as is from negative to positive. So, ola-ola signal itu bergerak daripada negative ke positive. Eh? So, at the, at the first zero crossing, you will see that the frequency of the carrier becomes the maximum at this point, which is Fc plus delta F. Okay, and then the input message move uh, from 
uh, move towards the uh, maximum positive so saya padam sekejap eh i i erase this one word first so that you are not confused okay so the signal now moves the input signal now moves from zero to the maximum positive so what happened what happened to the carrier so this is for the pm eh, for the pm what happened to the carrier is that uh, the carrier signal the carrier frequency will be at rest frequency so the carrier moves from fc plus delta f to the rest frequency which is fc okay and then the input message if you see that the input message move from maximum positive until zero crossing again but now the zero crossing is we move from positive to negative okay we move from positive to negative so what happened is that the carrier frequency moves from rest to fc minus delta f okay so this is uh, what we call as the minimum frequency of the carrier okay perubahan uh, frekuensi yang paling kecil okay Pro, sorry perubahan frekuensi kepada yang minimum fc minus delta f okay and then the input message pre, uh, the input message signal move towards uh, maximum negative peak over here so what happened to the carrier so the carrier will will change from uh, maximum negative to the rest frequency okay so from fc minus delta f to fc okay and then the input signal message move from negative maximum negative to the zero crossing what happened is that the carrier frequency change from fc until fc plus delta f so that's why you see the the, the waveform close uh, the ripple close to another which means that the max the frequency is at maximum okay so to summarize this that means you see that for fm the critical point is at the peak positive and peak negative of the input message untuk fm perubahan yang critical berlaku ketika uh, input signal uh, berada pada uh, peak positive ataupun peak negative itu untuk fm dan apabila uh, input message input signal berada pada zero crossing maka uh, frekuensi fm dia berada pada rest frekuensi okey yang ni eh rest frekuensi eh okey dia berada pada rest frekuensi berbeza dengan pm uh, for phase modulation the critical point is at the zero crossing Okay, either from uh, from uh, perubahan daripada changes from negative uh, cycle to positive cycle, it will produce the maximum frequency which is Fc plus delta F or during the zero crossing uh, from changes from a positive to negative cycle, what happen is that uh, the carrier frequency will become minimum which is Fc minus delta F. And during the positive peak and negative peak of the input message, the carrier will be at rest frequency. So this is for the phase modulation waveform. Okay. So this uh, this uh, waveform has been asked in the previous final exam, where students needs to differentiate uh, both of the uh, waveform. Okay pernah diberikan dalam final exam uh, previous final exam where the student asks about two different waveform like this where the student needs to find a few parameter of uh, theta t and also theta prime t okay 
So in that case, the students needs to understand uh, the changes of the carrier frequency in accordance with the amplitude variation of the input. Okay, so kamu perlu faham uh, bagaimanakah perubahan amplitude daripada input ini mengakibatkan perubahan frekuensi pada carrier. Okay, so inilah dia punya perbezaan antara FM dan juga PM. And for your information, when we do a FM process, we are indirectly do the PM process. Okay. Kalau kita melakukan proses FM, secara tak langsung kita juga melakukan proses phase modulation. Okay. And if we do PM process, kalau kita melakukan phase modulation process, we are indirectly do the FM process. So both of these are interrelated to each other. Nanti kita akan lihat eh, kedua-dua FM dan PM adalah saling berkait antara satu sama lain. Okay. So, ada soalan tak berkenaan dengan waveform ini? Kalau tak ada soalan, saya akan teruskan. Eh? The thing here you need to understand di manakah perubahan yang kritikal tersebut. Okay, you need to understand uh, where is the critical point of the changes in carrier according to the uh, variation of the amplitude of the input signal. Okay. So, kalau tak ada, saya teruskan. Okay. Uh, so, phase deviation and modulation index. Okay. Phase deviation and modulation index. So, modulation index, as I already shown previously, that uh, this is for the phase modulation uh, equations. You see that uh, we can we can substitute this uh, uh, this parameter. Okay, initially is initially what is Kp Vm. Okay, remember if we write the the the, the equation, this is actually Kp Vm. So Kp Vm is actually representing the modulation index for the phase modulation pm eh? okay which has the parameter uh, unit parameter of radians okay radians so beta p represent the peak phase deviations in radians for the phase modulated carrier known as modulation index so ini dipanggil sebagai Modulation index untuk PM, okay? The modulation index for PM. So one primary difference between F, uh, PM and FM is how the beta p is defined, okay? How the modulation index is defined, okay? So for PM, the modulation index is proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal and independent of the uh, input frequency. Kalau kita lihat, if you see from here, beta p this beta p is not related with the input signal frequency not related at all okay it doesn't matter how much is the uh, fm value you can uh, the, the beta p remains the same okay? beta p only depends on the amplitude of the input vm okay Whereas different for uh, this is different for the modulation index of FM, where the modulation index of FM beta f is inverse proportional to the frequency of the input. Okay, so you see that. Uh, <coughs> okay. So I will explain about beta f later. Okay. So, you see that the next slide is about beta P. So, what is beta P? Beta P is Kp Vm. So, the unit for Kp, okay, the unit for Kp is radian per volt and the unit for Vm is volt. So, if you multiply both of these, radian per volt multiply with volt, you will get radians. Okay, so beta P is in term of radians. So, uh, in the previous 
final exam, uh, it has been come out questions to find the value of uh, KP. If I'm not mistaken, you are given a table. Okay, kamu diberikan table. Okay, you are given a uh, what we call as the uh, uh, delta theta parameter and also delta v parameter. Okay, so here is x1, x2, x3. You are given a, a value in term of uh, radians. Okay, and then here a value in term of voltage. Okay, so when you want to find Kp, that means Kp is equal to delta theta divide with uh, delta V. Okay, so so that means uh, you need to, okay, so this is not delta. Okay, so I, I, I erase this one, so theta and also voltage, okay, theta and voltage. So what happened is that, when you want to find a, a phase deviation sensitivity parameter, uh, it is equal to delta theta over delta V, which is the difference between theta and divides with the difference between voltage. So you are given a table uh, uh, of parameters, of measured parameters. Okay, so theta, uh, this is a measured, parameter, uh, measured parameters at different time. So what happened is that uh, theta is given uh, a few parameters, so x1, x2, x3, and the voltage, uh, the, measure, the measured voltage is uh, y1, y2, y3, and so on. Okay. So when you want to find the delta, that means it is the difference between two values. Okay. The difference between two adjacent values, either x1 and x2 or x2 and x3. Okay. You can. Uh, take any one okay so let's say x2 minus x1 okay and here is uh, delta v is the difference between two adjacent values of voltages so this one is divide with y2 minus y1 so you will get the value of kp in term of radians okay and then uh, here, okay, about beta F. So beta F uh, is equal to Kp Vmt. So remember this, we have uh, Kp, sorry, Kf Vm over 2 pi Fm. Okay, so <coughs> uh, you see that here is uh, like this. Eh? So what is Kf? Kf, the value of Kf is in term of uh, radian per second per volt okay so the the unit for kf unit untuk kf adalah uh, so remember in bracket here is the unit okay not multiplication okay don't confuse so e here in the bracket is the unit for kf is radian per second per volt and when you multiply with uh, voltage so you get radian per second and the value for 2 pi fm is also radian per second. So therefore, beta f is a unitless parameter. Okay, beta f adalah unitless parameter. Okay. And you see that beta f, we can also write beta f in term of kf vm over fm. Okay, kf vm over fm. So what's the difference? The difference is the unit for Kf. Okay. Previously is in term of radian per second per volt. Now the unit is in term of hertz per volt. Okay. So that means you divide with two pi above uh, the the above part and also the denominator part. Eh? So that's why you get a hertz per volt. Okay. So this is, uh, remember, if you use a hertz per volt, that means you just need to divide with Fm. Okay, Both will produce the same value. Okay, The difference is all only about 2 pi. So here is actually you divide uh, both, you divide the above part is with 2 pi and do you divide 
the denominator with 2 pi. So that's why you get a Hertz per volt uh, divide with Hertz like this. Okay. Perbezaannya adalah sebanyak 2 pi. Eh, yang mana kita bahagikan bahagian atas dan bawah dengan 2 pi. Okay. So normally in the exam, normally, usually, uh, we use a beta f parameter like this. Eh, Hertz per volt so that easy for the students to do the calculations. Okay. And then uh, frequency deviation and also phase deviation. Frequency deviation and phase deviation, delta F and also delta theta. So delta F is KF VM and delta theta is KP VM. So delta F, the unit is in term of hertz. Delta theta, the unit is in term of radians. Okay. So, for example, a sample transmitter with assigned rest frequency 100 megahertz deviates, deviates, it will oscillate eh, by uh, 25 kilohertz. So, carrier change, so that means, you see that, uh, okay, so the carrier here is FC, it deviates, okay, above and below about 25 kilohertz. So, here is... FC plus 25 kilohertz over here is FC minus 25 kilohertz so this uh, both here 25 kilohertz Wait. so 25 kilohertz here is 25 kilohertz okay so you see that uh, here is a hundred, eh, hundred mega. Here is ninety nine point nine seven five, ninety nine point nine seven five mega. Here is hundred point zero two five, zero two five mega. Okay. So both of these, the carrier swing is equal to 25 times 2. So the carrier swing is equal to 50 kilohertz in this example. Dalam, exa dalam example ini, carrier swingnya adalah bersamaan dengan delta F times 2, which is 25K times 2. So we get uh, 50 kilohertz. Okay. So, uh, beta F uh, is also equal to delta F over FM. Okay, is also equal to uh, delta F over FM. Okay, so either we want to write like this. Uh, so, here you see that here the difference is that here uh, the unit for KF is in term of radian per second per volt. Okay. And here is uh, okay. Ini 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 ni yang lain eh. So delta F over FM. So both of these will uh, produce the same answer. This is the same eh. Either you want to write like this or you want to write delta F over FM. Doesn't matter. Okay. So uh, the equation for FM becomes VC sine in bracket uh, two pi FCT minus delta f over fm which is this one is actually beta f cos omega mt okay so depending on the value of beta f we may distinguish two cases of frequency modulation narrow band and wide band fm so this is the variation of frequency modulation okay we have narrow band, we have wide band FM. So we will look at this after this. Okay, later we, we're going to see about uh, narrow band and wide band. Okay. And uh, this table, if you see this table, uh, are the, the, uh, the important parameters for the FM. Uh, so what important here is the first row. Okay, the first row here about FM. Uh, signal eh? the first row here is about FM signal if you see that the FM signal 
uh, assigned frequency is from 88 until 108 megahertz so if you look uh, in the radio kalau ka kamu lihat radio uh, for example in your car for example um, the fm frequency band is from 88 until 108 okay that is the frequency assigned by the uh, by the government for the uh, fm radio okay fm radio dia punya julat adalah daripada 88 sehinggalah 108 megahertz and you see that here the bandwidth for all fm uh, for for the fm the whole bandwidth for the fm is how much is this you see that here is uh, okay. so this is uh, 20 megahertz okay within 20 megahertz there are about uh, many many stations about 100 stations actually eh? so you see that each radio station has a bandwidth of 200 setiap radio station akan mempunyai uh, bandwidth sebanyak 200 kilohertz so in total in total if we compare with 20 mega we will have about 100 station 100 radio station at one time okay you can divide 20 mega and 200k you divide 20 mega and 200 kilohertz you will get 100 100 means that we can allocate 100 radio stations within this 20 megahertz okay dalam satu kawasan in a in a specific area for example in uh, Batu Pahat for example okay in in the whole Batu Pahat we can assign a FM frequency to 100 radio station within Batu Pahat for example okay but remember that uh, uh, frequency of the radio station change when you move from one place to another place okay that means uh, the radio station is given is assigned with different frequency at different location okay so within a specific area okay within this coverage of the specific area the the mcmc assigned uh, for 100 uh, radio stations in batu pahat for example and when we move to another place for example to malacca for example the frequency will be different for for the radio station okay but the 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 band the band as, the assigned bandwidth is the same from 88 until 108 okay so berlakunya perubahan frekuensi apabila uh, kita bergerak ke ke tempat yang lain kerana radio station ini because this radio station has been assigned with different frequency by the government because when you want to get the frequency you have to bid okay you have to bid uh, uh, to the government eh? okay kalau kita nakkan frekuensi kita perlu bid and we need to compete with other uh, people okay so that's why the radio station when they want to get that certain frequency they need to bid uh, and then they need to compete with other radio station for example if i want to get a frequency of 100 megahertz i need to bid uh, i need to do the bidding so the highest bidder will get that frequency okay so uh, you see that 100 stations and the maximum deviations okay is 75 kilohertz okay so you see that uh, okay so 75k 75k so this one is 75 75 so 75 75 is 150 so where, where is another 50 kilohertz another 50 kilohertz is over here okay is what we call as the guard band okay 25 and 25 we will see about this later so kalau kita lihat if you see that uh, maximum frequency deviation is positive and negative uh, 75 uh, where you see that 75 plus 75 will produce 150 kilohertz 
of channel bandwidth. However, the maximum assigned uh, channel bandwidth is 200. So where is another 50? Another 50 kilohertz is actually for the guard band. Guard band is the uh, the distance, the empty distance eh, that separate from one channel to another channel. Okay, so this guard band is is like an empty space that the radio stations should not operate at that frequency in order to overcome the adjacent channel interference okay because the whole the whole channel bandwidth here is 200 okay for safe the radio station needs to operate within this 150k and leave uh, the guard band the empty space to, to to separate from one channel to another channel okay so guard band ini digunakan untuk memisahkan antara channel dan channel bersebelahan supaya tidak berlakunya interference so that we want to avoid the interference uh, with the adjacent channels that's why we have the guard band okay in order we we should not operate at the guard band eh? the guard band is to separate it's an empty space to separate within one channel to another channel okay and the highest audio the highest uh, for fm by standard is 15 kilohertz okay so yeah the rest uh, the rest of the row you can read by yourself these are uh, different application different frequencies okay for satellites military tv uh, police radio uh, amateur radio and so on eh? but the important thing is the first row here okay percent modulation so what is percent modulation percent modulation is uh, is the ratio of uh, delta f actual divided with the delta f maximum defined by the standard okay for example given modulating signal produce uh, plus minus uh, 50 kilohertz frequency deviation and the law stated that the maximum frequency deviation allowed is 75 kilohertz only then the percent modulation is defined as 50 kilohertz okay so this is actually your your frequency okay your radio frequency divide with the maximum frequency deviations okay so this is the your radio frequency deviation divided with the maximum frequency deviation stated by the law. So 50k divided with 75k. Okay, remember that 50k is from your system. Okay, system uh, your transmission system has a frequency deviation 50k divided with the standard with the maximum st uh, stated by the law is 75k. So therefore, the percentage modulation is equal to 67 percent okay very straightforward okay kalau ada soalan if you have questions you can ask me you can interrupt my lecture no problem okay kalau ada soalan nak tanya uh, terus tanya no problem okay so if you don't have question i will proceed okay saya akan teruskan Okay, so here we have example, a few uh, example. So hopefully you like it. Okay, uh, previously we learned about the basic concept, the theoretical concept. Uh, so now let's look at the example, three point one, uh, three point two. Eh? Where is three point one? Yeah. Okay. No problem. I try to find 3.1. Okay, 3.1 is here. So now it's 3.2. Example 3.2. Okay, example 3.2. A 100 megahertz carrier frequency with a measured sensitivity of 3 kilohertz. Uh, so straight away you know that here is the FC, the carrier uh, measured sensitivity of 3 kilohertz per volt. Uh, you see that here is hertz per volt so this is actually defined as kf 
Okay, so the carrier is modulated with another signal. So what is it? It is the input signal actually. It is the input message signal. So the input message signal modulate with the carrier. It has the uh, peak amplitude of two volt, which is VM. Okay, so this is a VM, and it has a frequency of uh, four kilohertz. So this is the FM. So the maximum frequency deviation. So how to calculate uh, the maximum frequency deviation? So maximum frequency deviation is defined as delta F. So delta F is actually equal to KF VM. Okay. So KF VM, you can uh, use your calculator. Uh, 3 kilohertz multiplied with 2 volt so you get 6 kilovolt is uh, 6 kilohertz 6 6 kilohertz boleh so siapa tak dapat boleh tanya saya eh? no problem okay and then determine the modulation index beta f okay so beta f is equal to uh, kf vm over fm okay kf vm over fm or you can also write delta f over fm so this is equal to 6000 6 kilohertz divide with fm is 4 kilohertz huh. so 1.5 okay 1.5 no unit okay no unit and then the modulation index if the modulation voltage is double ah. <laughs> so now we have a VM new okay, VM new is double two times VM so sekarang uh, dia berikan uh, so two times VM so this is equal to uh, four volt okay now the question asks how much is the beta f nu so beta f nu okay when the when the in, when the input voltage is double okay how much is the beta f nu so beta f nu is uh, kf vm over fm which is uh, 3 kilohertz per volt times okay divide with uh, FM is uh, 4 kilohertz okay so you see that here is uh, uh, 12 divide with 4 you get 3 no unit okay that means if you double the modulation voltage or modulating voltage input voltage that means the uh, the modulation index will be double okay kalau kita gandakan uh, input voltage maka uh, modulation index juga akan berganda pada kadar yang sama okay and then what the modulation index for v for 2 cos 2 pi uh, 8 times uh, 10 power of 3t what is this so the question asks how much is the modulation index if you are given a new vmt kamu diberikan nilai vmt yang baru okay this vmt has the voltage of 2 volt 
and has a frequency of 8 kilohertz. So now you see that the frequency of the input message becomes 8k, 8 kilohertz. So how much is the uh, beta f? So beta f is equal to kf vm over fm. So that means uh, 3 kilohertz per volt multiplied with 2, 2 volt for the vm multiplied with 2 volt divide with uh, the new frequency of fm is 8 kilohertz 8 kilohertz ah. so berapa ni? so if you see from here so 6 divide with 8 you get 0 0.75 ok no unit so you see that if you double the frequency of the input you will you will uh, reduce the modulation index by half kalau kita gandakan uh, dua kali ganda uh, frekuensi input maka dia punya modulation index akan berkurang menjadi separuh ok 1.5 bahagi 2 ok so you see that uh, that means the modulation index for FM is inverse proportional to the input frequency. Okay. Ha, ini kalau ada soalan boleh tanya, terus tanya. So, the next one is question number 5. Express the FM signal mathematically for a cosine carrier. Ha, so, you are given cosine carrier and the cosine modulating uh, signal. So, now the... Uh, uh, the question asks you to define the FM signal equations okay in term of cosine both cosine okay so you are given uh, uh, based on part 4 based on part 4 so the carrier amplitude is 10 volt so this is VC okay remember for VFMT okay VFMT is equal to VC uh, VC cos uh, uh, big bracket 2 pi FCT plus uh, beta F uh, beta F plus beta F sine uh, 2 pi FMT eh, 2 pi FM So, we can write this one like this. Uh, so, 10 cos, okay, 10 cos in bracket 2 pi. Uh, this one you need to uh, 2 pi times uh, 1 mega. Okay, so uh, here is 1 times 10 power of 6 T. Okay, 1 mega. Uh, frequency of the carrier is 1 mega. Plus beta F. Beta F is already been calculated for part 4 is 0 0.75. So 0 0.75 sine. Why I use sine? Because... Uh, uh, integral of cosine will produce positive sign. Kamiran daripada cos, asalnya cos eh, kerana soalan memberikan cos eh. Okay, because the question give you cos, so integral of cosine will produce positive sign. Sine 2 pi uh, 
frequency of the input message is 8 kilohertz based on part 4 so 8 kilohertz 10 power of 3 uh, close big bracket uh, so you see that 10 cos 2 pi times uh, 1 mega t so uh, plus beta f 0 0.75 sine 2 pi times 8 kilohertz t so this is the equations for fm boleh eh ada soalan nak tanya Uh, doktor, nombor lima ni okay. Dia masukkan nilai je ke? Ah, ya, masukkan nilai kerana yang lain telah diberikan Kita dah kira yang bahagian part ni So, we have calculated part 4 So, based on the general equation of cause uh, ini, Based on the general equation of FM kita uh, We just need to, to, to put the value only Because we already calculate the modulation index uh, we have been given the uh, VC, we have been given the FM, so we just need to put inside the general equation. Hanya perlu masukkan oh. saja. Oh, tak payah kira. Uh, Sebab sudah kira. Oh, sudah kira. Okay. Uh, because we already calculate uh, in part 4. Okay, in part 4, we already calculate the beta F, so we just need to put inside the equations. Oh, okay, doctor. Thank you. Okay. So this is the uh, the equations. Okay, ini adalah equations untuk FM dan juga PM eh, for FM and PM. So you can uh, browse these uh, equations. Uh, you can learn by yourself all of this. Uh, you don't need to memorize because because the final exam is an open book. So you don't need to memorize this one. Eh? Okay, this ah, okay, this one. So this uh, about FM radio frequency for commercial radio FM. Uh, remember that I already uh, explained that the assigned band for FM is from 88 to 108 megahertz. So this is the standard frequency, uh, standard assigned frequency for FM applications. Okay, if you see from, uh, if you see in your radio, eh, kalau you ada radio, if you see in your car radio, for example, you see that the frequency is from 88 until 108 only. Okay, so uh, between this, between this FM band, this is 20 megahertz. Okay, the, the band is 20 megahertz. So this frequency band is shared by many radio stations. Okay, they dikongsi oleh banyak radio stations uh, where uh, by standards it is say that the maximum channel bandwidth is only 200k with the uh, frequency deviations uh, is 75 and 75 plus guard band. So we have 200 uh, kilohertz for each channel. Okay, so you see that here um, from here uh, you see that each Station each radio station is allotted uh, is allotted to a frequency deviation of 75 kilohertz plus minus where the carrier frequent carrier swing is 150k. Uh, ini uh, tertinggal lah, so please correct this one is 150 kilohertz, not 150. It's 150 kilohertz of carrier swing. Remember carrier swing is in term of hertz. And 25 kilohertz is for the guard band above and below the carrier swing. So how much is the total? Uh, the total bandwidth is 200k. So how do we get 200k? As I have explained previously, uh, here is uh, 75, 75. Okay, so this is 75k, 75k. Okay. 
and then we have another one here is uh, 25k for the guard band okay and another another one below here is 25k okay so here is 25k so the total uh, total bandwidth for a channel total bandwidth for one channel is 200 kilohertz okay 200 kilohertz okay so if one channel is 200 kilohertz how many radio station we can allot it uh, we can allot it in the uh, in the fm band okay how many so you see that the fm radio station is very big is 20 mega okay so if you uh, minus if you subtract uh, 100 mega 108 megahertz minus uh, 88 megahertz you will get 20 megahertz okay and one radio station is 200k so how many radio station i can put inside this fm band so therefore uh, the number of stations okay number of station is equal to uh, 108 mega minus uh, 88 mega divide with 200 kilohertz okay so here you will get 100 station okay so that means you can allot it you can assign 100 radio station at a particular time in a specific place okay dalam satu kawasan kita boleh assign kepada 100 radio station pada satu-satu masa okay so uh, for your information, this has been come out uh, many times in the previous final exam uh, questions. Ini pernah di, ditanya dalam uh, beberapa final exam yang lepas. Okay, exactly the same like this. Eh? This is also considered as a favorite question. Okay. Ah, okay. Red, uh, narrow band and wide band. Okay. Narrow band and wide band. What is it actually? okay so this is based on the the word narrow narrow and also wide okay so narrow band means that small band small bandwidth it defined as a small bandwidth uh, version of the fm okay this is a small bandwidth of fm okay so fm has two main category wide band narrow band okay so wide band and narrow, narrow band the difference uh, the difference is in term of bandwidth okay perbezaan utamanya adalah dari segi bandwidth okay narrow band has a very small uh, bandwidth it is ranging from uh, roughly between 10 to 30 kilohertz only very small okay 10 hingga 30 tu dikatakan sangat kecil okay so the modulation indices, uh, indices are generally kept near unity okay so that the fm bandwidth can be determined in a similar manner as the am so in narrow band okay in narrow band uh, the way we calculate the bandwidth is equal to 2 times fm which is similar to the amplitude modulation double side band full carrier okay this uh, because of the uh, the bandwidth is very small so the way we calculate the uh, the bandwidth is equal to 2 times the fm okay nanti kita akan lihat kenapa macam ni eh nanti kita akan lihat so uh, the the characteristic of narrow band fm looks similar with the uh, amplitude modulation uh, double side band full carrier dia punya karakteristik itu hampir sama dengan uh, uh, amplitude modulation double sideband full carrier nanti kita akan lihat so this system is widely used in the mobile radio station uh, systems for the police fire and taxi services telephony amateur radio and so on 
So ini adalah uh, untuk uh, police radio fire uh, uh, for fire uh, what they call uh, for fireman eh? uh, fireman radio taxi services or all of these user narrow band FM. Okay. So assume that the carrier signal is a uh, VC cos omega CT. So this is using a cos. Uh, and then the modulating signal is VM cos. So therefore, the VFMT is VC cos omega CT 2 pi FCT plus beta F sine omega MT. So remember, integral of cos become positive sine. Okay. So the the issue here here is. Isunya di sini adalah nilai beta f. The value of beta f is very small. Okay, is very small. It is uh, approximately less. Okay, approximately less than 0.25. Okay, less than one. Okay, less than one. So uh, we will see about this. Okay, so here it is said that cos beta f sine omega mt is approximately equal uh, approximately equal to 1 and also sine beta f sine omega mt approximately equal to beta f sine omega mt what is this actually okay so these are the approximation for the trigonometry yang mana kita akan lihat di sini eh for this one okay so if you look at the structure of the uh, FM signal, okay, the structure of the A FM signal, we have cos A plus B, eh, where A is equal to omega CT, B is equal to beta F sine omega MT. So ada dua bahagian, eh, A and B. Okay, according to trigonometry identity, cos A plus B is equal to cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. So this is according to trigonometry identity. Okay. So therefore, we can rearrange the equations to become VC cos. Okay. Cos omega CT. So this is a cos A. What about cos B? Okay. You see that cos B, cos of beta F sine omega MT, this one. Cos beta F sine omega MT is approximately equal to 1. Why is it like that? Uh, because the value is very small and we can assume that it is approximately equal to 1. Okay? So that's why actually we have 1 over here. Okay? Minus... Vc sine A sine omega CT sine B. What is sine B? Sine B is sine of beta F sine omega MT, which is this one, approximately equal to beta F sine omega MT. Ini telah diberikan ha, untuk memudahkan pengiraan. So this has been given to uh, to ease the calculations okay so it is beta f sine omega mt okay so you see that from here okay from here we have uh, vfm t is equal to vc cos omega ct minus vc sine omega ct uh, multiplied with beta f sine omega mt so from here we can rearrange the equations okay we can elaborate the equations and based on trigonometry identity again sine a sine b is equal to 1 over 2 cos a minus b minus cos a plus b so ini adalah trigonometry identity so berdasarkan ini based on this we can rearrange the equations to become like this the final equations for narrow band is equal to vc cos omega ct plus 1 over 2 beta f okay 1 over 2 beta f vc cos a minus b okay 
cos a minus b okay so because uh, okay this is uh, the the terbalikkan ya so a cos a plus b minus cos uh, 2 pi fc minus fm so this is for the usb this is for the lsb okay so you see that uh, why is it like this because here is we have a, a minus over here so minus and minus so that's why it become the positive over here so that's why uh, 1 over 2 beta f vc of the usb okay upper side band minus cos of the lower side band okay and you see from here this uh, equation looks familiar this nampak familiar <laughs> yeah. where we have three components eh? we have the carrier component we have the upper side band component we have the lower side band component so based on this equation we can draw the frequency spectrum okay the frequency spectrum looks like this we have three component we have the carrier the carrier has the amplitude of vc according to here and here we have the upper side band with the amplitude of 1 over 2 beta f vc and we have the lower side band with the amplitude of 1 over 2 beta f vc okay remember in order to draw the frequency spectrum first you need to define the equation based on the equation then you can draw the frequency spectrum so without the equation you don't know how the frequency spectrum looks like okay hanya dengan adanya equation barulah kita nampak uh, macam mana uh, apakah komponen yang ada dalam frequency spectrum tersebut okay and remember when you draw you need to label all of this frequency the amplitude uh, the axis here is in term of voltage okay uh, sama juga dalam test eh. in the test if you see from the test if you draw correctly you will get two marks if you label correctly you will get two marks so you get four marks for the drawing okay you can check from your test uh, uh, questions and eh, test answers eh? okay so uh, you have if you have question about this you can ask me question you can ask me no problem if you don't have question I will move to the next topic which is uh, wideband FM okay kalau, kalau ada soalan uh, if you have question uh, please interrupt my lecture no problem I will try my best to 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 answer your questions okay okay the next topic is wideband fm okay wideband fm uh, from the word wide means that the bandwidth is bigger okay the the bandwidth of the fm is big okay the punya bandwidth itu besar okay so uh, wideband fm is uh, normally used in the commercial applications for example like the uh, radio stations fm radio station use a wideband frequency okay so uh, the wideband uh, w wbfm eh, this is a wbfm uh, the equations for fm remember that this is a general equation so you see that vc cos uh, so now the the notes likes to use a cosine function because it is easy because we we only need to handle with positive eh? so vc cos 2 pi fct plus beta sine 2 pi fmt okay so this is the general equation for fm so now uh, the uh, the parameter that determine the size of the bandwidth is this beta okay this beta will determine uh, uh, the bandwidth of the fm the bigger the beta uh, the beta parameter the bigger will be the bandwidth okay lagi besar nilai beta lagi besar nilai bandwidth of the fm okay so beta parameter will determine the size of the bandwidth okay so how to uh, how to calculate the bandwidth of the wideband FM? 
Well, we cannot simply uh, calculate like that. We need to use uh, other method, eh, which is uh, we need to use a Bessel table or we can use a Carson's rule. Okay, we will see about that later. Okay. Uh, so, this is a uh, Bessel, uh, okay. uh, Bessel function, eh? or this is what we call as a uh, Bessel function table. Okay. You see that uh, Bessel is actually from, uh, okay, nanti saya katakan. Okay, so uh, you need to understand this one. It's very important. Uh, later in the final exam, you will use this Bessel table. So, you need to understand how to use it. Okay. So, uh, in Bessel table, uh, the first column here is the uh, modulation index beta f. So, beta f, you see that from 0 until 8. Okay. So, it is ascending order. And then we have here is a carrier component. And also here is the side bands component. Okay. What is J? J is the relative amplitude. Okay. Relative amplitude. Uh, is uh, relative amplitude is V Vn divide with Vc okay so this is the relative amplitude so relative amplitude don't have any unit dia tidak ada unit dia adalah nisbah antara uh, the real amplitude divide with the uh, carrier voltage okay so J0 is the carrier component okay is a carrier component so it is from uh, 1 until uh, here is 0 0.17 okay and you see that here is negative value over here this is not a minus actually this is uh, uh, just to sh this is actually the uh, phase shift 180 degree phase shift so that's why we have that negative uh, polarity over there. So this negative polarity doesn't uh, does not means a small value. It is actually uh, uh, it is actually 180 degree phase shift. Berlakunya perubahan fasa sebanyak 180 darjah. Okay. And here uh, on the on the right side we have J1 until J10. Okay. So these are representing the number of sidebands pair of sidebands okay pasangan sidebands okay kalau uh, if we see it, uh, until j10 that means we have 20 components okay 10 components on the upper side and 10 component on the lower side so okay, we have pair uh, upper and lower okay kita ada sepasang okay and you see that uh, how to read uh, how to read this table is first of all you need to know what is the modulation index okay this is the first criteria the first important thing you need to know you need to calculate the beta f once you know the beta f then you can determine uh, the relative amplitude of the side bands of the components okay for example contoh eh for example if the modulation index is equal to 1 Okay, if the modulation index is is equal to one, so therefore I will have carrier component, first sideband, second and third. Okay, for example this one. Okay, so what happened is that. Okay, so I will have uh, uh, J zero over here. Okay, I have J one. I have J2 and I have J3 okay so I I will have a carrier component and three pairs of sideband tiga pasang sideband okay this is if I have if the value of beta is equal to 1 what about if the beta is equal to 8? Ha, macam mana kalau nilai beta itu 8? If the value of beta is equal to 8, that means we're going to have carrier component and we're going to have 10 pair of sidebands. 
10 pasang sidebands. We're going to have 10 upper sideband and 10 lower sideband. Very big. So you see that the higher the value of beta, the bigger would be the bandwidth. Okay, lagi besar nilai beta, lagi, bes lagi besar nilai bandwidth. Okay. So, so this is it. Uh, you, we have a carrier and also the upper and lower sidebands. Is a pair of sidebands. Okay. And here, uh, this is about the bezel. So you see that uh, this is uh, important things is that in the table in your notes, okay, table dalam nota ini, it has uh, uh, eliminate the sideband values less than 0.01 okay so dalam table ini okay table this table has eliminate the value less than 0.01 what does it mean okay apa maksud dia so actually <laughs> that means this table is not 100% accurate Okay, it is accurate but not 100% accurate because we have removed the value less than 0.01. So, what does it mean? Maybe there's a sideband over here which has the value less than 0.01. Okay, maybe. Okay, over here maybe we have a value less than 0.01. Over here maybe we have value less than 0.01. So it doesn't matter. So in this table, it has been uh, neglected or eliminate the value less than 0 0.01 because it is very small. Dia telah abaikan. So if you ask me, this table is not 100% accurate. But it is enough to, to calculate uh, the bandwidth, uh, to draw the FM uh, frequency spectrum and so on. Okay. And then, some of the carrier and sidebands amplitudes have negative sign. Okay, have negative sign. So, this negative sign means uh, the amplitude is simply shifted in phase 180 degree. Okay. There are 180 degree phase shift. So, if you draw the frequency spectrum, okay, you shouldn't draw negative. You should draw above. Eh? Uh, uh, when you draw the, the frequency spectrum, although the value is negative, you shouldn't draw below like this. Eh? Okay? Kamu tak perlu lukis ke bawah seperti itu eh, untuk tanda negative tersebut. Okay? Although it is negative, when you draw the frequency spectrum, you should make it as positive side. Okay? Because there is no negative frequency. Okay? Remember, the negative is only to show the uh, phase shift 180 degree phase shift okay and this is the bezel function so that table the previous table is actually defined from this function this is a bezel function okay this is the real bezel function so bezel function you see that uh, x axis here define uh, the modulation index beta f and the y axis here define as the uh, relative amplitude of j j n j 0 1 2 3 and so on okay so you see that uh, if you have a ruler okay kalau kamu ada ruler uh, you can put your ruler for example at uh, here uh, modulation index equal to 1 so you see that at modulation index equal to 1 you see that uh, the line here will cross at j3 j2 j1 and also j0 okay it will cross at j3 j2 j1 and j0 so that's why uh, how much is the value okay the value is the same as the value stated in the table okay you see that here it will cross j3 will cross j2 will cross j1 will cross j0 how much is the value the value is equal to the value in the table this one okay this is the the value 
okay so actually you can you can use this graph using your ruler menggunakan ruler kamu untuk mendapatkan value you can get the value from from this graph actually okay and here you see that um okay this is the example okay this is the example of the amplitude spectrum so uh, for your information okay for your information uh, remember when we draw the frequency spectrum you must draw the freq uh, the, sp the frequency spectrum to be above the x axis okay all towards the positive side Okay, don't draw below like this. Eh? Jangan lukis seperti itu. Okay, although the value in the table is negative, you should not draw below like this. Eh? Okay, jangan lukis seperti ini. Ini bukan cara melukis frequency spectrum. Okay, remember there's no negative frequency. Tidak ada negative frequency. Okay, so although it is a negative value in the table, you should make it as positive ok, anggap dia uh, seolah-olah tidak ada tanda negatif ok so, how to determine the bandwidth ok, the, the reason uh, we have the Bessel table is to, to determine the bandwidth ok so the bandwidth according to Bessel is equal to 2 na two times n n is the number of significant bandwidth uh, significant sideband multiplied with fm so we get the bandwidth in term of hertz okay n is the number of significant sideband the number of a uh, pair of sideband how many pair of sideband okay previously we have learned that Okay, if you see from here, okay, so the value of n, the value of n is depending on the value of beta f. Nilai n bergantung kepada modulation index. Okay, for example, if the value of beta is equal to 1, okay, so therefore we're gonna have three pair of significant sidebands kita akan ada tiga pasang significant sideband in this case the value of n is equal to 3 remember n is the number of significant pair of sideband actually eh? berapa banyak pasang sideband sebenarnya dia bukan jumlah sideband okay so n is equal to 3 if beta f equal to 1 Okay, if beta f equal to 8, that means we're gonna have n equal to 10. Okay, akan ada sehingga 10. Okay. So, uh, this is how we calculate the Bessel uh, bandwidth. Okay, Bessel bandwidth. So, Bessel bandwidth is, uh, you see that exam this example... Uh, calculate the bandwidth occupied by FM signal with a modulation index of 2 so beta F is equal to 2 and the highest modulating frequency is uh, 2.5 uh, kilohertz so this is the highest FM value the highest FM value is 2.5 kilohertz so this is a FM okay so beta f you see that uh, you are given beta f is equal to 2 so you need to look at the table okay see the table beta f equal to 2 you have uh, up to four sideband four significant sideband four significant pair of sidebands okay so therefore 2 times this is n 2 times 4 times the highest frequency of FM ok, FM yang ter, uh, ter paling jauh eh, the, the, uh, the highest value of FM ok, you see that here if we have uh, FC over here we have here FM1 
uh, FM2 sorry not F not like that <coughs> Okay, so we have uh, four pairs of sideband. So this is uh, up to uh, FM1, FM2, FM3, FM4. So this is the highest. So the highest here is uh, 2.5 uh, kilohertz in this example. Okay, dalam example ini, uh, 2.5 k. Okay, so. What, what does it mean by highest? I just want to show you the highest modulating frequency. That means it is the, the highest frequency of FM. Okay? Because in FM, we have a, a few set of frequencies. So we choose the highest. Okay? So in this case, 2 times uh, 4 times... Uh, uh, this is uh, 2.5. Uh, this is uh, FM. Eh? So we get bandwidth of Bessel equal to 20 kilohertz. Okay, bersamaan dengan 20 kilohertz. So normally we write here as a bandwidth of Bessel. Okay, BW Bessel. Another one is a bandwidth by Carson. So this is defined by Mr. Carson. Uh, bandwidth Carson is actually also known as the approximation bandwidth. Okay, bandwidth uh, approximation. It is defined as 2 times delta F plus FM. Okay, 2 times delta F plus FM. So, bandwidth by Carson, you don't need to look in the table. Okay, you don't need to look in the table. Okay, just need to find the value of delta F and also the FM. And bandwidth by Carson... You will find later that the bandwidth by Carson is less than the bandwidth by Bessel. Okay, nilai bandwidth Carson ini, dia lebih rendah daripada nilai bandwidth by Bessel. Okay, kenapa macam tu? Eh? Why is it like that? Because the bandwidth by Carson is the approximation bandwidth. Okay, compared to the Bessel, Bessel uh, bandwidth is more accurate. Okay, ben, uh, Bessel table, Bessel bandwidth is more accurate because uh, it is based on the number of sidebands. So we calculate how much is the total bandwidth. Okay, so we're gonna see the later the, the difference. Okay, normally in the exam we will ask you both: eh, calculate bandwidth by Bessel, calculate bandwidth by Carson. Both of it. Okay, you need to know. So here is. Uh, you see that uh, bandwidth, okay, assuming the uh, maximum frequency deviation, delta F, is uh, 5K, and maximum modulating frequency is 2.5K, uh, the bandwidth would be equal to uh, 2 times delta F, okay, delta F plus FM, so you will get 15 kilohertz. If you see from here, you see that uh, how much is the beta actually? Beta F is actually delta F divide with uh, FM. Okay, so 5K divide with uh, 2.5K. It is actually equal to 2. Okay, so if we use the best uh, bandwidth by Bessel, macam tadi eh. Bandwidth by Bessel previously for beta f equal to 2, we get around 20 kilohertz. Okay, so this is for beta equal to 2. Beta equal to 2. Okay, beta equal to 2 using a Bessel, we get 20k. However, when we use a Carson, we only get 15. For the similar modulation index for the same modulation index we get a two different values of bandwidth okay kita akan dapat dua jenis bandwidth yang berbeza satu bandwidth by Bessel another one is bandwidth by Carson okay so
comparing the bandwidth, uh, you see that the Carlson rule gives smaller bandwidth. Okay, so masing-masing nak ada bandwidth sendiri ya. Eh. So uh, ada kegunaannya Carlson ini. Eh. There's also a application used for the Carlsons. Eh. Some use the Bessel. So no problem. Okay. Okay, so now uh, Example 3.4 Okay, um, Doctor Oh, yeah. yeah Sorry, nak tanya yang beza tu yeah. Yang beta beta uh, F B, Beta F kan uh, Which is the, uh, I just want to know the formula yang dapat tu Dia bagaimana Macam kalau Carlson rule Dia macam doktor tunjuk tadi lah Yang satu lagi tu Ini Ah, uh, yang beta f sama dengan delta f over fm ni. Okay, so because uh, because you are given a uh, delta f, you are given the frequency deviation. Uh, mm -hmm. You also given a uh, uh, modulating fre modulating signal frequency fm. So come, uh, you are given two parameters, right? Delta f. You are given uh, fm in the in the question. So. Uh, I just want to show that how much is the value of beta f. So beta f is equal to delta f over fm. So I'm not sure uh, adakah kamu tanya tentang ini. So this is actually from here. Uh, Masih tanya formula tu. Formula beta f. Ah, uh -uh, beta f tu. Okay, formula beta f you okay, can yeah. see from uh, the previous slides. This one. Eh? Oh, this one. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so beta f. So beta f is actually delta f over fm or you can also write kf vm over fm okay kf vm over fm or you can put make it as delta f over fm so this is for the beta f okay so yeah. if you go to the slide so you see that uh, because I want to show uh, uh, I want to show that the, the modulation index is actually the same as the previous example. So when you calculate the beta f, uh, 5k divided with 2.5k, you get 2. So this um, e uh, beta f equal to 2 is same as the previous example for the Bessel. So when we use Bessel with beta f equal to 2, you get a bandwidth about 20 kilohertz. However, when you use a uh, Carson's, you only get 15 kilohertz. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, doctor. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, if you have question, you can ask me, no problem. Okay, I will try my best to answer your question. Okay. Okay, the next example. Okay, the next example uh, for an FM modulator with modulation index equal to 1, a modulating signal VMT is given a VM sine uh, 2 pi uh, 1000T. So, this is uh, equal to FM 1 kilohertz. Okay, FM is equal to 1 kilohertz. And you are given a carrier, uh, VC, this is a VC, uh, here you have a 500K, so this is a FC. FC is equal to 500 kilohertz. So FC is equal to 500 kilohertz. Okay. So uh, the question asks, uh, determine uh, the number of sets of significant sidebands. So the question asks uh, how, how much is the value of n? Okay, so if you look in the table for beta f equal to 1, you will get uh, how many pair of significant sideband. So the number of significant sideband for beta f equal to 1, you will get equal to 3. Okay, so n the number of pair of significant sideband is equal to 3. So this is a straightforward question. So this is equal to 3. Okay. And their amplitudes. Ah. So here is, uh, remember that we need to write, uh, okay, 
zero point seven seven. So seven seven four four one one zero two. J zero is Okay, so this is from the table. Okay, I, I rewrite again the value J0, J1, J2, J3. Okay, uh, remember that uh, JN, JN is equal to VN divide with VC. So JN is the relative amplitude. So how can we find the, the real amplitude? How much is the amplitude? So therefore, VN is equal to gn times vc okay so therefore if you want to find the v0 the amplitude of the carrier component okay so v0 is equal to j0 multiplied with vc so you see that uh, here uh, uh, vc is 10 eh? vc is 10 so 0 0.77 multiplied with 10 so i will get here 7.7 .7 volt uh, so now i have the value of volt okay so v1 is equal to j1 multiplied with vc so this is 4.4 uh, .4 volt v2 is equal to uh, j2 times vc so this one is 1.1 volt v4 is equal to sorry v3 eh? v3 is equal to j3 multiplied with vc so i get 0.2 volt okay so this is to answer the second question the amplitude okay when we talk about amplitude it is actually v1 v2 v3 and so on okay remember these uh, main equations here uh, vn equal to jn times vc okay then draw the frequency spectrum showing their relative amplitude uh, so this question is uh, uh, it's a bit confusing actually because uh, the, the, the second question asks about amplitude. Suddenly, the third question asks you to draw according to relative amplitude. Okay? So, I just want to show you that if you draw according to relative amplitude, that means this is a JN. Okay? So, remember you have, uh, you have 3, eh? you have 3, 1, two three here also you have three one two three okay so this is uh, this is FC this is FC plus FM FM1 FC plus FM2 and here is FC plus FM3 okay FC plus FM1 Sorry, uh, I redraw again so that easy to see from here. So FC plus FM, FC plus 2 FM, here is FC plus 3 FM. Okay, and the axis here is F frequency. Over here is FC minus FM, FC minus 2 FM, FC minus 3 FM. Okay, and the value here is J0, J1, J2, J3. This is if we draw according to relative amplitude. Okay. 
so j1 j2 j3 uh, here is uh, j1 j2 j3 j1 j2 j3 ah, okay so when we draw we cannot uh, draw simply put the variable like this okay kita tak boleh lukis uh, dengan hanya variable seperti ini okay uh, i just want to show this is according to relative amplitude if you you can also draw according to the amplitude if the question asks you to draw according to the amplitude that means over here okay that means over here is v1 v2 v3 okay so saya saya just i just want to show the difference eh? uh, both are amplitude okay kedua-duanya adalah amplitude so if you draw according to amplitude v okay according to amplitude that means this is a v0 v1 v2 v3 v1 v2 and also v3 okay but uh, i i follow the question okay the question asks relative amplitude so let's draw according to j okay according to uh, relative amplitudes and you see that uh, the question already give us the value of frequency the question already give us the the value of the amplitudes or the value of j so i need to draw correctly saya perlu lukis dengan cara yang betul uh, i can i cannot simply put uh, the variable okay in the exam you should not draw according to the variable value okay tidak perlu kamu tidak boleh lukis berdasarkan nilai berdasarkan uh, variable sahaja you should put the value okay so uh, let me draw again so perhatikan eh class uh, perhatikan so this is uh, jn okay dia lukis kat sini tak berapa best saja eh? ok so this is JN and here is uh, remember this is ok let's say I put here is 500k so this is F F in term of kilohertz ok F in term of kilohertz so here is 500 and the difference is uh, 1 kilohertz okay fm is 1 kilohertz so that means here is uh, 501 okay 501 here is uh, 502 here is 503 okay so i have here is uh, 499 And then here is uh, 498 and also 497 over here. Okay, 497. Okay, 497. And I need to put the value. So since the question asks regarding relative amplitude, so I need to put the relative amplitude. So this is 0 0.77. This is uh, 0 0.44. 0 0.44. 0 0.11. 0 0.11. 0 0.11. 0 0.02. 0 0.02. Okay. So this is how you draw the frequency spectrum. You draw correctly and you label correctly. Okay, and then example three point five. Example three point five. So, for an FM modulator with a peak uh, frequency deviation delta F is equal to ten kilohertz. Uh, uh, modulating signal FM ten kilohertz, VC ten volt, carrier frequency FC. 500 kilohertz determine actual minimum bandwidth 
from the basal table okay so this is uh, first uh, ask you to find the the bandwidth by basal so you see that uh, the uh, the term used for the uh, bandwidth by basal is actual minimum bandwidth actual bandwidth eh? so because the the the, the basal bandwidth is more 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 accurate okay so that's why it's uh, called as a actual bandwidth you see the second question you say that approximate bandwidth which is by Carson okay so if you want to find the basal bandwidth okay B bandwidth by basal so it is equal to 2 times n times fm how much is uh, n so n is determined by the value of beta so first of all we need to find beta f is equal to delta f divide with fm so this is equal to 10 kilohertz divide with 10 kilohertz so this is one uh, remember uh, if you see from the table uh, if the uh, modulation index is equal to one that means uh, the number of significant sideband is equal to three okay so this here is two times okay. so two times uh, 2 times 3 times FM how much is FM is equal to uh, 10 kilohertz okay FM is equal to 10 kilohertz okay so 6 times 10 you get 60 kilohertz okay 60 60 kilohertz okay and then what uh, find the approximate minimum bandwidth by Carson so bandwidth by Carson is equal to 2 times Delta F plus FM so this is equal to 2 times Delta F is equal to 10 plus 10 kilohertz doctor yeah Muhammad Haikal is raise hand apa dia Muhammad Haikal dia raise hand I, I don't know I think dia ada nak tanya kot ok ada soalan nak tanya siapa Haikal ada nak tanya ke kalau tak ada saya teruskan eh? uh, ok uh, sorry untuk ada kot Tadi tak jawab okay. pun dia present. Ah, okay. Uh, for students, if you have question to ask, uh, uh, just interrupt me, okay? Uh, you boleh terus tanya. Eh? Sebab saya tak boleh nampak kalau you raise hand. Eh? Saya tak nampak. Okay, no problem. So, if you have question, you can ask me. Uh, you can interrupt my lecture. You can ask me question, okay? So, uh, 2 times delta F plus FM so this is 20 times 2 so you get 40 kilohertz ok 40 kilohertz so it is smaller than the bandwidth by Bessel ok so plot the output frequency spectrum for the Bessel approximation so uh, this is plot the frequency spectrum so this is the same like previously ok ni sama seperti yang sebelum ini so you see that uh, this question doesn't mention uh, based on the amplitude or based on the relative amplitude dia tidak cakap eh dia tidak menyatakan secara specific uh, you need to use the amplitude or you need to use the relative amplitude so in this case it's up to you ok uh, the easiest way is to draw according to relative amplitude ok so uh, here is uh, according to relative amplitude JN uh, the carrier frequency here is uh, how much uh, 500k uh, tolong mute kan eh? 
students. Sorry, five, sorry. Okay, 500K. So this is uh, F kilohertz. Okay. So carrier is 500 and then we have here, we have three pair of sideband because the modulation index is equal to one and we have three pair of sideband. So this is five zero, uh, okay, this is five one zero. Okay, we have another one is uh, five two zero. Okay, and here is uh, five three zero. Okay, so here is uh, uh, four nine zero, and then here is uh, four eight zero. Over here is we have four seven zero. Okay, and here is zero point seven seven. 0 0.44, 0 0.44, uh, 0 0.11, 0 0.11, 0 0.02. So 0 0.02, 0 0.02. Finish. Full marks for this one. Okay. So uh, the way you you need to draw the frequency spectrum, uh, remember you need to draw correctly. Second is you need to label all all of the component. Okay, kamu perlu labelkan kesemuanya sekali. Okay. Deviation ratio. So deviation ratio is uh, equal to. Uh, okay, what is deviation ratio? Deviation ratio is the minimum bandwidth that uh, uh, what this is. This is actually uh, okay. Deviation ratio is actually the the highest uh, modulation index that produce the highest bandwidth. So in 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 uh, the easiest way is like this. Okay. Deviation ratio is the modulation index that produce the highest possible bandwidth. Okay, dia adalah nilai uh, modulation index yang menghasilkan nilai bandwidth yang terbesar. Okay, the widest, uh, uh, the worst case modulation. Okay, uh, that this is the the highest modulation index that produce the widest uh, bandwidth okay dia adalah ditakrifkan sebagai modulation index yang terbesar yang menghasilkan nilai bandwidth yang paling besar okay so deviation ratio is equal to delta f maximum the largest delta f divide with uh, the highest uh, uh, modulating signal frequency so delta f max divide with fm max okay so you see that if you remember uh, okay okay this is uh, for the standard okay okay let's look at the example okay so determine the deviation ratio okay remember deviation ratio is the highest bandwidth the maximum bandwidth that produce the widest bandwidth okay so deviation ratio is the highest modulation index sorry mo deviation ratio is the highest modulation index that produce the widest bandwidth okay so uh, here is given uh, according to the standard it is given that uh, the fm broadcast transmitter with a maximum frequency deviation so the maximum frequency deviation by the standard remember the delta f delta f max okay is equal to 75k and the maximum modulating signal frequency is 15 kilohertz this is a fm max okay how much is the dr deviation ratio or the maximum modulation index so it is equal to uh, delta f max eh? Del dr is equal to delta f max divide with uh, fm max Okay, so this is 75k, 75 kilohertz divide with uh, 15 kilohertz. 
Uh, so this is uh, 5. Okay, equal to 5. So modulation index 5 will produce uh, the widest bandwidth in this example. Okay. Uh, so uh, you can uh, cancel the, the uh, this. Uh, so this is almost similar with the above part. Eh? So you can uh, cancel this one. Uh, power. Okay, power. So the next topic is about power. Uh, well, this is very important. So the power in angle modulated signal is computed as 1 over 2 Vc square uh, summation of uh, Jn square from minus infinity to infinity. That means we calculate all. Eh, we calculate all the uh, component, eh, the power components. Eh. Kita kira semua sekali. Eh. Konsepnya sama. Okay. We still use the same concept. We calculate all the uh, power. Okay. We calculate all the power. All of this. Eh, all of the power from the frequency component. Kita, kita kira semua power, kita tambahkan, eh, we, we sum, we do the summation of all the frequency component powers, okay, then we get the total power, okay. So, uh, uh, if we use the equations, it is uh, 1 over 2 Vc square uh, times summation of Jn square from minus infinity to infinity. So, uh, here, you see that, uh, remember that we still use a Vc uh, Vc square over R eh? kita masih menggunakan uh, uh, we still use the same power equations you see that here, where is the power? ok, actually here we have the power R over here, so in this case R is assumed as unity is e assumed as equal to 1 so that's why there's no R component in here sebab R telah dianggap sebagai 1, sebenarnya dia ada R eh? actually there's a R of it, over there Okay, and you see that uh, finally we get Vc square over 2. Okay, actually 2R actually, eh? Vc square over 2R. So this is actually power of the carrier. So where is this? Di manakah komponen ini? Where is this component? Suddenly disappear. It's not disappear, eh? dia bukan hilang. Eh? So, uh, according to Bessel properties, berdasarkan uh, Bessel properties, it is said that uh, the summation of j square from minus infinity to infinity is equal to 1. Okay, so this is a Bessel property. Ini adalah berdasarkan property of Bessel. So Bessel said that summation of j n square from minus infinity to infinity is equal to 1 ok so that's why the the total power is actually equal to the carrier power ok in angle modulated signal the total power is equal to the carrier power uh, so we need to look at this uh, later so you see that the carrier power is equal to Vc square over 2R ok, uh, ni yang tadi eh this is, uh, this is actually we have R over here but R here is assumed as 1 so that's why uh, actually we have uh, Vc square over 2R so this is the carrier power where Vc is the peak amplitude eh? this is a V peak amplitude ok and when we want to calculate the total power uh, we, we can use the, the conventional method <laughs> where we sum we sum all of the uh, power component okay kita tambahkan ke semua power component okay we 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 do the summation of uh, uh, summation of all the power component the carrier component and also the sideband why this is two because we have pair of sideband upper and lower okay kita ada upper and lower so you see that here so uh, this is a V0 square over 2R, okay, so you see that P0, P1, P2, so we are using the real amplitude, we are not using the relative amplitude, okay, 
So uh, here is remember V0, Vn is equal to Jn multiplied with Vc. Okay, so V0 is equal to J0 multiplied with Vc. V1 is equal to J1 multiplied with Vc. Okay, and so on. Dan seterusnya. So, you see that here. Uh, so, this V1 is actually Jn, J1, uh, Vc square. This is actually J2 VC square. J3 VC square. And so on. Okay. So, you see that <coughs> uh, this V0 is actually J0 VC. Okay. So, this is a square. Also square. So, you see that when we do the square... You see that uh, we have J0 square Vc square over 2R. Okay, so this is actually V0, sorry, J. So, uh, J0 v, J0 square Vc square over 2R. So, you see that uh, Vc square over 2R is actually equal to Pc, carrier power. Okay. So, all of this component has the carrier power. Because semua komponen ini mengandungi carrier power. Okay. So, that's why here is J0 Vc. And then here you see that J1 square Pc. Because here we have a Vc square over 2R. We have Vc square over 2R, Vc square over 2R. So that's why we have a J1 square Pc, J2 square Pc, J3 square Pc until Jn square Pc. Okay. And for your information, these, all of this, finally, you're going to see that later it is actually equal to Pc only. You, when you do the summation, you will get finally the value is equal to PC. Ah. It is equal to the carrier power. Okay, But uh, remember, when you use the table in your notes, okay, you will get approximately equal to PC. Apabila you menggunakan table dalam nota, you akan dapat approximately equal to PC kerana uh, table tadi telah mengabaikan eh? because that table is already eliminate the value less than 0 0.01 so that's why you're gonna get a uh, slightly less than PC okay dalam uh, in term of uh, 0 point something okay so that's why it is said over here the total power in the carrier and the sidebands components approximately equal to unmodulated carrier power when you use your uh, the table in your notes you will get approximately equal to pc slightly less around 0. Point something okay less than 1 eh? much much less than 1 0. Point 0 something okay very small difference okay very small difference if you get difference between 1 2 3 uh, that one is uh, too big that one uh, your answer is wrong actually eh? okay so, uh, when you do the calculation, you see that it is approximately equal or equal to the carrier power. Okay. So, maybe I want to start with this one. So, saya akan teruskan eh, uh, sikit lagi. So, saya akan berhenti sekejap lagi. Maybe I will show some of this. Okay. So, an FM signal is given as VFM equal to 12 cos 6 pi times uh, 10 power of 6 plus 5 sine 2 pi uh, 1250T volts. Okay. So, from here, you can see that this is VC. This is uh, FC. This is VM. This is FM. Okay. So straight away we can answer the uh, we can find the answer. So here is frequency of the carrier. Frequency of the carrier is this one. So you need to divide with two pi. Okay. So this that means this is a uh, three mega. Okay. So this is actually FC. 
equal to 3 times 6 okay, hertz because this one is 2 pi eh? so you need to divide with 2 pi so you get 3 okay. frequency of the modulating signal fm so fm is equal to uh, here is <coughs> Uh, one two five zero hertz. Oh, very easy. Okay. Oh, sorry. This is not BM. So this is a uh, beta. Eh? Sorry, this is beta. Sorry, my mistakes. So this is supposed to be uh, beta. So this is beta F. Okay. So VC FC we get beta F. So beta F. Straight away, we can get a beta f is equal to 5. Frequency deviation. Ah, so, how to find frequency deviation? So, frequency deviation delta f. Okay. Delta f is equal to kf bm. Or you can uh, rewrite this according to the beta function. Remember, beta, beta is equal to delta f over fm. So, uh, delta F is equal to beta F multiplied with Fm. So, this one is 5 multiplied with 1, 2, 5, 0. So, you will get, uh, how much is this? 1, 2, 5, 0 multiplied with 5, you get 6, 2, 5, 0. So, 6, 2, 5, 0 hertz. Uh, doctor? Yeah? Nak tanya yang yang FC ni kan uh, kan 6 pi darab 10 kuasa 6 tu kan dia bahagi 2 pi ke? Ni 6, 6 pi kali 10 kuasa 6. So you kena bagi 2 pi. Dia sebenarnya actually this one is uh, 2 pi FC. Uh, okay so, so you need to divide okay, with 2 pi. Kita nampak 3 tu kan? Ah ya. Yeah. Alright okay. okay. So that's why I get uh, 3. Okay, remember this is a 2 pi FCT. Okay. Power dissipated in the uh, 10 ohm resistor. Okay. So, uh, here you need to calculate uh, like this. Eh? You need to calculate based on the power total. This is uh, either you need to find uh, P0 plus uh, 2 times uh, P1. Uh, if you see that uh, modulation index is equal to 5. Okay, kalau kamu lihat eh. Uh, if modulation index is equal to 5, that means you're going to get up to up to 8 significant sidebands. Okay? So, if you see from here, okay, so P1 plus P2 until P8. Okay? You need to do the uh, this one. So that means this is uh, J0 square PC plus 2 times uh, J1 square PC until you plus with uh, J8 square PC. Okay. So, or you, you can also find equal to PC. Okay. So, you're going to see later that the value is approximately equal to the carrier power. Okay. So, how much is PC? So, PC is equal to VC squared divided with 2R. So, this is equal to uh, VC squared. VC is 12. So, 12 squared divided with 2 times uh, 10. Okay. So, So here you get uh, this is equal to so 12 kuasa 2 bahagikan dengan uh, 20 so you get 7.2 7.2 what okay so if you do calculation based on this you will get 7. Point, uh, if I'm not mistaken maybe 1999 something okay is very close to 7.2 okay dia sangat hampir kepada 7.2 okay so in exam either you want to write like this the whole e the complete equations or you want to make it 
equal to PC both are correct kedua-duanya betul tidak ada masalah no problem okay so I want you to try later find to try to find the total power according to complete equation and also find the po total power according to the carrier power so you you need to see the difference very small difference okay so that's all for today you have question or not you can uh, you can ask me ada soalan kalau kalau okey so saya, kalau ada soalan boleh tanya eh, sambil kita ambil attendance eh okey so i will give the attendance so you can scan your attendance So if you have question you can ask me now. Okay, sementara we uh, when we do this uh, when you scan your attendance you can ask questions if you want no problem. So uh, here is 17 so the QR code so you can scan your attendance. So after scanning your attendance you can go to the next uh, class. Okay, you can take a break, no problem. Okay. So when you have scanned your attendance, you can uh, sign out from these meetings. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Uh, sambil sambil ni kalau ada soalan boleh tanya, eh? no problem. Kalau tak ada, no tak tak ada soalan. Thank you, Doctor. Pun, tak, okay, welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Um, Doctor, yang untuk skema jawapan untuk test tu, Doctor akan bagi dekat mana ni? Uh, nanti saya akan bagi uh, maybe dalam author atau dalam whatsapp maybe oh, ok just I just want to check sebab saya nampak lah kat salah, salah tu kat mana cuma nak tahu macam mana jalan kiri je nah, boleh boleh no problem okay. nanti Tunggu saya uh, uh, dia gini sebab uh, actually uh, skema markah saya tak boleh beri saya kena sebab skema markah tu dia ada berapa portion markah, berapa markah, oh, scan, scan. Oh, I, I just want to know. Ah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Itu sebab saya kena saya kena revise uh, skema markah menjadi jawapan. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh -huh. saya kena buang bahagian markah-markah tu supaya uh, uh -huh. saya boleh share dokumen tersebut lah. So, nanti uh -huh. saya saya rewrite again the 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 answer scheme so that you uh, you know uh, di mana silapnya. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Tapi saya tengok uh, dalam test uh, jawapan semua banyak sama eh. So saya uh, assume memang uh, meniru tu uh, berlaku besar-besaran eh sebenarnya. Okey. So uh, itulah. Saya lihat uh, pattern jawapan sama. So markah pun samalah. Ha uh, okey. So ada lagi siapa siapa lagi belum scan? Siapa lagi tak dapat scan? Doktor, saya tak dapat scan Nama siapa? Muhammad Abrisam Abrisam Ok, Abrisam Saya dah mark Ok, terima kasih Doktor Ok, siapa lagi belum? Uh, Doktor, nama saya Doktor Siapa nama? Uh, Muhammad Zulilmi Muhammad Zulilmi Muhammad Zulilmi Ok Terima kasih Doktor Ok, sama lagi seorang siapa? 3 2 1. Okey sama. Okey itu saja. Okey. Okey itu saja. Okey bye bye.